change of scenery. We are at my desk and I wanted to go through the entry pages that I have filled out so far. If you're new here, I'm Angie and I'm the founder of Heart and Soul of Bobo Design Studio. And I design and create the Wanderlust Passport Travel Journal that you see me use on my channel. And it's a travel journal that I created to help me better document my travel and experiences. I have gone through so many different travel journals in my life and none of them really worked out. And so I developed this system to help me record the things that I wanted to remember and then gave me just enough creative freedom to fill in the rest. So I went to Alaska on this really cool fishing charter for my cousin's birthday. We went from sunny Palm Springs to Juno and I saved my little ticket here and when we got there we stayed at this travel lodge that was just so busted like we called it the sweat lodge it was so hot in there and Craig ended up having to create like a swamp cooler out of this really crappy desk fan that was in the room uh, because apparently in Alaska a lot of places don't have air conditioning because why would you have air conditioning when it's freezing 10 months out of the year also our hotel had windows which we thought maybe we could just open but there was no screens on them so we were really worried about mosquitoes and stuff coming in so yeah we just stayed in that sweat lodge and sweated it out a little bit about what we saw around town. We went to this really cool brewery called Forbidden Peak Brewery. Brewery, that's a hard word for me to say, brewery. And we met everyone there before we got on the ferry to go to Elfin Cove. There was this dog that belonged to the captain and he was so, I think his name was Coda, if I remember correctly, but he only had one eye and he was so cute and he did not like it when the boat was really hitting them waves. He was just cuddling with different people and laying on the floor. And then of course my cousin, every time I travel with my cousin, she sleeps, like she can sleep through anything. Granted, she was on Dramamine because she gets really seasick, but still. Every time I see her and we're traveling and she falls asleep, I make sure to get a photo of her sleeping. But we arrived at this really cool place called Elfin Cove. I think population 19 people during like year round. Obviously there's a lot more people there in the summer because all the different charters are there. But it's about two hours from Juneau and we took this ferry. And I guess normally they take a seaplane, but because there were so many of us and the weather can be pretty unpredictable, they just had us all cram into this really awesome I don't know, like a high-speed ferry or something, like a little catamaran thing, but it was really cool. And a lot of us weren't sure what to expect when we got to the lodge. And literally up until we pulled up here, I was like, oh, we're doing the deadliest catch. Like, I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> we're going to live on a little boat and fish all day. But no, we stayed at this awesome place called Eagle Charters. And if you want more information about them, I'll link them. But it was such a cool experience. So this is our room key or our room number. And when we first checked in, we got settled into our rooms. And the first thing we had to do was, oh, actually, before I even get there, I have this really cool like holographic laminate. So I put that on the outside of this card. And it's clear, so that's why you can still see the writing and stuff underneath, but I just thought that was pretty cool. Once we um, were all up in our rooms and situated, we knew that we were going to start fishing the very next day. And so we had to spend some time making sure that all of the gear that we were assigned to fits. So we had um, these kind of overall things, like waterproof overalls. We had a rain slicker and then we had these boots. And that's what we dressed in every day when we would go out and, um, on the charter boats. So this is us trying them on and it was so much fun. Everyone was just getting really excited because this tiny room was like filled with all these hooks. So every day you show up and your stuff's on hooks and they clean them and wash them and make sure that they're ready for you for the next day, they're, they're dry. But everyone was getting suited up and fitted and just the energy was so much fun because we realized what we were about to do. And it just felt so official to have like kind of these long john silvers fisherman outfits but they were black and so they were like kind of cool anyway very very excited 
And then for our first night, we were there, we had a luxurious dinner, the rain came in, and for us being in the desert, when we left Palm Springs in the desert, it was like 100 and, I don't know, 115, and so we were like so excited to be around rain. But I know a lot of folks that were on this trip come from the Pacific Northwest, so they were not as amped as we were, but I was really, really excited that it was gonna be raining. I don't really know how to swim. <laughs> But I love storms on the water. I think that's so cool. And getting on a boat in a storm with these really crazy waves, it was so exciting. I was really, really looking forward to that. <laughs> so we set our alarm for 5 a.m. because we have to get up extra early. We have to be on the boats, I think by 6.30 every morning. And we had to make sure we had enough time to go and get some breakfast, get dressed, obviously use the bathroom and all that fun stuff. There's a bathroom on the boat, but you know, you want, to, you want to take care of your business before you do that on a little boat toilet but so our first day we got paired in groups of four and then for every boat you had a captain and a deckhand so each boat could only fit six people so it was really intimate and my cousin who organized this trip did such a great job making sure that everyone could mingle with other people so she separated all the groups every day and pretty much kept like the couples together so we got to just meet everyone else in the charter but our first day we were really lucky because we got to go with some seasoned veterans and they gave us a lot of really good tips on fishing and what to expect and they were just so much fun and here we have these orange safety hats and i just want to share the story behind this so our friend claire her dad always rocked this hat it was like his signature look and he unfortunately lost his battle to i think it's called glioblastoma and so she was back in cape cod for the memorial and in honoring her dad she asked all of her friends to go and get these hats and so we purchased them and we wore them on the trip just to to give our props to tom so that was really fun and everyone loved our hats everyone wanted to borrow them and steal them <laughs> so and it made it they really are safety hats it makes it easy for us to spot so if we fell overboard we would have been fine they would have found us but i learned a lot about different fishing lingo as well like the term gaff so a gaff fish, which I can probably talk about later, but it's basically a really large fish that you pay extra for. So if you catch an extra big fish and you want to keep it, you pay what's called a gaff. And yeah, so that was like the big, the big term of the week. Like, are you going to gaff your fish? Did you gaff anything? So, and I wrote down here what that, what a gaff fish is. So if it's between 40 and 80 inches, you have to pay the fee, which is 500. But if it's over 80 inches, the fish is free. And an 80 inch fish is really big. That's like a 200 pound fish. So there was this competition of like who, who was gaffing fishes and how big were they, who got the biggest catch. So that was a lot of fun. So our first boat was Willow May, which I thought was really fitting because Wilma, our dog, her name's Wilma Gay. And so we just started calling our boat the Wilma Gay. <laughs> and it was cool because it's like a hot pink boat. And so just all these big rough and tough Alaskan guys and we're just on this hot pink boat called the Wilma May. Wilma May. Wilma Gay, whatever. But when we went out there, we're essentially this whole trip, we're on the hunt for salmon and halibut mainly and rockfish. So rockfish is delicious. Oh my God. I mean, all this fish is really, really good. But we did catch some other ones like some lingcods which we had to throw back. And then these certain types of sea bass. And then there's some fish that we have to throw back because they're not part of the fish that we can catch during season. Wildlife Fishing Game monitors and regulates what you can and can't take just to keep the ecosystem in check, which is great. Some of these fish we have to throw back when we get them. And these fish, they have a bladder in there that inflates as they come up because they come from really, really deep depths and their stomach bladders sort of expand. And at first I thought we were killing all of them, but then you see them kind of like, and then they swim back down. But yeah, it's really crazy. And apparently there are 102 different kinds of rockfish. Craig also got a little bit seasick that day on the boat. He said he had to have a real 
good pep talk with his stomach at that point in the trip. And this is like one of the funniest things. So our captain, his name is Don and his nickname, I guess, is Don Julio. But he had made a comment that Craig was like such an excellent fisherman. And he kept asking me and Craig, like, how long have you been fishing? And Craig's like, I've never fished before in my life. (laughs) This is like really my first time ever fishing. And he just couldn't believe it. Him and the deckhand. We just thought, oh, he's just saying stuff. Like, no, he's like, you've got really good technique. And Craig's like, I've literally never done this before. He just kept saying, oh, he's such a great fisherman. But later on in the trip, he kept repeating it to other people that Craig was the best fisherman he'd ever fished with. (laughs) So I just thought that was really funny. And what makes it extra funny too, is like that was the reputation that Craig started getting on this trip with all the other captains and deckhands. But the wild thing is Craig is also very allergic to fish. So he couldn't eat anything that he caught. So yeah, the best fisherman cannot eat his catch. But this was our first catch as a group. We caught a lot of little rockfish. We didn't catch any salmon, which I was really bummed about. And then we got what I thought were great. It turned out to be like pretty small in size. Craig did catch something that was kind of close to maybe like 70 or 80 pounds, but it was too big to keep without it being a gaffish. So we didn't want to pay for it. We wanted to try and catch something bigger. So we tossed this to back. And then at the end of the night, after we come back, everyone gets to shower or not. Um, And then we go and have dinner. And what was really cool is they do like awards every night and we all sit together like family style. There's, you know, the crew and the captains and the deckhands and then all the people that were going to fish, like all the clients, guests, all the, everyone that was part of the charter. And so we just kind of eat like as one giant family, which was really cool. And then... Craig got a little pen for his catch and um, Amelia, my cousin's daughter, caught one of the biggest fish of the day at 65 pounds. And look at how proud she is. She's just, that is such a boss move for a little girl like that to reel in a huge fish. What is this here? Oh my God, yes. So this page, I totally, okay, well, first of all, there's Jeremy Allen White from The Bear. I was so tired, but I, I'm that kind of person that likes to fall asleep to like background noise. So I like the TV on to fall asleep. It kind of helps me not have my mind spiral. I get to focus on something else. So I just kind of downloaded a bunch of episodes from season three of The Bear to watch at night. Well, I didn't even get like six minutes into the episode and apparently I fell asleep. (laughs) And what's really funny is the rest of the trip, I kept trying to watch the series and I don't think I got through the full first episode the entire time we were there. That's how tired I was. So the next day we switched boats and switched kind of you know the the groups of people we were with for this one we got to be with my cousin and her friend from high school and her fiance now husband and like this was full on I joke that we were the varsity squad because this boat was a non-stop party it was so much fun and it was like the only day of like real sun that we had out on the water. So we got to like experience some really pretty blue skies. Of course, my cousin is sleeping. She does such a pro at it. And (laughs) I love this spread because, so fun fact about me, I've never had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich like ever in my life. I mean, I have obviously enough for me to think that I didn't like it. So I never ate one. And we have our lunches made for us each day. Every night you get this little sandwich card and you fill out the kind of sandwich you want. You can say like what bread you want and then they make it for you so that on the next day when you're out on the boat, you have a lunch. And then you kind of pack like little things yourself the morning of like chips and drinks. 
and everyone was having like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I had made a comment that I didn't like them or that I'd never really had one and the entire boat like literally stopped and they're like what are you talking about <laughs> so then I decided to take a bite of my cousins and lo and behold I liked it I thought it was really good and then Scott mentioned like you should try it with Cheetos and I was like that sounds horrific but then I tried it and I liked it. It kind of reminded me of like, I mean, you don't eat the Cheetos in the sandwich. You have the Cheetos like while you're eating the sandwich. And it kind of reminded me of that Chicago style popcorn where it's like cheddar cheese and caramel. So it's pretty good. 10 out of 10 would do it again. In fact, I did do it again. We made an attempt to catch some salmon, but nope, that did not happen. In fact, Damn, they're really hard to catch. <laughs> I heard that there was like commercial fishing that had like just started. So maybe it was like a little bit thin. I don't know, but we had a really hard time catching them. So, and it uh, turns out we had a really hard time catching halibut too. So <laughs> we caught like the bare minimum. We caught a lot of small stuff, but we didn't really have anything to brag about. But we did catch a lot of jellyfish, so fun fact, there's also a lot of jellyfish in the water and it just mucks up the lines and they're gross and sticky, so. We did a lot of dancing. We did a lot of discussion about our favorite TikToks. And the best part was like, I look over and Amanda is sitting there jigging her line, which is where you sit there and you have to kind of rock the line back and forth at, at a certain depth to try and catch fish. And for the halibut, you want to be on the bottom of the ocean and you want to pull your line up and then let the weight drop back down and touch the bottom and then pull it up and you just kind of do that. But you know, these fish are like 300 feet down. It, it burns your arms and your back just to stand there and pull this rod up and down. And at one point I look over to check on Amanda to see how she's doing and she's like, I don't even have this down at the bottom. I don't want to catch anything because I'm so tired <laughs> because you're burning your arms and you like obviously want to catch something, but the thought of catching something and then having to use all whatever energy you have left to fight this creature and bring it back up. It's just, everything is burning at that point. So I thought that was really funny. And of course, when you come back into the dock, everyone's, you know, all the boats are rolling in at the same time and everyone's like, what did you catch? What did you catch? And since we were very unsuccessful this day, Craig just kept saying, we caught the biggest memories. <laughs> because that's what it's all about. And we were like joking that we wanted to give Jason and Eric a break. So we tossed everything back so they didn't have to gut anything or clean the decks. We were really just being incredibly thoughtful. And then on the next day, we start all over again. Same thing, we have dinner at night when we get back wake up early, go and have breakfast and get onto the boat. And today for this page, we're on the Howley Hunter. And <laughs> our captain was Blaine and our deckhand, same was Carter. And the weather was really rough this day. We were in a full on storm and I freaking loved it. And at one point we were going through and the water was just, the swells were pretty big. They said it was like, Seven or was it 12 foot? No, it was probably like a seven or eight foot swell. And our captain's just like, ow. <laughs> so that was really cool. So it was me and Craig and Sonia and Ruby. And it was just so much fun. We got to have a stop at this little seal island or seal rock and you can kind of see how rough that water is and how he really managed to keep us steady just so that we could go and look at these seals. Like the current is crazy fast at this point, but that was really, really fun. <laughs> and so as we're heading out, Ruby asks our captain, are we looking for little fish first or big fish? Thinking like, are we going to get like halibut first or are we going to look for like rockfish? And without even batting an eye, Blaine goes, I've never looked for a little fish in my entire life. <laughs> so the life of the fisherman, always going after the biggest catch. Oh, here, see, I'm celebrating my very first peanut butter and jelly sandwich as an adult. 
And then this was my, <laughs> so this is the form that I filled out, but you're out there for a really long time. So I always got two sandwiches, but I started with my roast beef. Yeah. And then down here, I wanted one peanut butter and jelly, but I had to commemorate this being my first time ordering a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I kept my little sandwich station card here. So when you catch just a little tiny guy, like this little fish, you throw him back, but they call him a hat fish. I don't know why, because you can put it on your hat. It's so tiny, but they're really cute. So whenever we caught like, a little tiny one, we would put it on our heads and you throw them back. Also, if you catch a really small halibut, they call it a chicken. And so it's like, if you catch a chicken, you just throw it back because you don't want to allot your daily allotment of halibut to go to a chicken. You want like a, a decent sized fish. And this is kind of cool. I don't know if you can see it, but um, we had a little whiteboard of everything that we caught. And it's kind of glary in this photo, but we caught so many halibut that we threw back. I think Craig um, alone probably caught like eight or nine that we had to throw back. So... But what he did catch was the big one. This was crazy. So here's the other fun thing. When we were on this boat, it was pretty much raining the entire time. So it's cold and it's freezing. And Blaine is all about catching the big one. So he got us to this place where there's like a cliff underwater and there's a channel and so basically since it was been raining and the currents were pulling everything out he thought that this would be a really good place for us to post up because all the nutrients and stuff that's in the water just kind of gets flushed through this channel which means a lot of fish might want to be eating there so we posted up there and poor craig was just jigging for hours like absolute hours by himself and every time they would reset a line, like Blaine wouldn't even ask. He would just hand Craig a new rod. And for perspective, if I'm, if I was fishing and jigging for like 15 minutes and I caught something and then you're having to reel it in, which is like another 10 to 15 minutes where you're actually putting all your energy into pulling in this fish, I would need a break. Like I'm, I'm sitting out for the next half hour because your arms are burning your back is burning, your thighs are burning, your butt is burning, and Craig, like a champ, just sat there and jigged the entire day from like seven till like one o'clock, <laughs> seven in the morning till one o'clock, just nonstop. And so he finally gets one. And what is just absolutely bonkers was it was pretty late I think it was maybe around like 12.30 or one o'clock almost. And he has been jigging this whole time, catches it and immediately knows like this one's really, really big. So it's just instant mayhem because they have to pull all the lines up. Everyone's like, move out of the way, move out of the way. And because you don't want the lines to cross from all the other lines that are set. And Craig starts reeling it in and this thing, you could just tell how much he's struggling that it's really big. And all of a sudden, Blaine, our captain, looks over the edge and he goes, he just said, I'm gonna get the gun just Sonia and I just lost it because when the fish is so big in order to haul it into the boat, you might have to shoot it, which is like the most Alaskan thing ever. Thankfully, or I don't know, regretfully, I don't know, depending on where you are, uh, did not have to shoot the fish, but like, there it is, 110 pounds. Not gonna lie, it looks a lot bigger in this photo than it really is, but still, it was, it was massive and it was delicious. And Craig will never know because he can't eat it. And I had to dedicate another spread to just how funny it was that Blaine and Carter were both so shocked that Craig had never fished before because they said 
that there are people that do this their whole lives, that come every season, that are real fishermen that just never gather the technique that Craig has. And Blaine kept asking me, like, you know, what does your husband do? I'm like, he's an engineer. He sits on a desk all day. But he grew up on a farm, so I don't know. But and he would just like shake his head, like, oh, I can't believe he's like never fish. Like what a like what a waste. <laughs> What a waste of a natural talent. So, and it just made me oddly proud. Like, that's my man. So, that that brings us to the third. So now I'm going to start working on these other pages. I'm so behind. Life is just really, really crazy. But I'm really loving how this is coming together and going back and looking at my notes on my phone. So, if you're new here... I have something called Notion and I use this to help me keep track of everything. So I have, if I go into search, I have an Alaska fishing trip and every day while I was on the boat, I just took notes and screenshots of what I did that day. And that way, when I come back later, like I am now, I know what to write inside my journal. So. I'm going to start up these next few pages and I'd love for you to follow along on the rest of this trip. <laughs> 